Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark, Mark Fusco here for a very special edition of the show and I've got Jeffrey, Jeffrey how do you get your, I don't know, you get your Landold, last name? Landold, Jeffrey Landold. I'm the Landold, that's it, yes. Yeah. So i got Jeffrey here, uh, Viticulturalist here with uh, Benziger and he has shown ultimate hospitality here. Um, we took a huge tour of the facilities and talked all about uh, what Benziger does here and the dynamic, biodynamic uh, nature of everything, and uh, my father and I were blown away. So, um, anyway, without further ado, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us who you are and how you got here? Yeah, uh, first of all, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Um, it's always it's always nice to show people uh, this property, which is our flagship property. We have multiple vineyards throughout Sonoma County that we farm organically and biodynamically. Uh, however, this is, uh, like I said earlier, this is kind of the mothership mm -hmm. of, of everything we do. It's, uh, it's the place where we want people to come and experience um, our wines. It's a place that we want to show as our, our showpiece, if you will, for 15 years plus of commitment to biodynamics. And um, biodynamics, in a, real, in a real simple way of, of explaining it, is just... The next level in organics, um, we've uh, we've seen that uh, the biodynamics that we practice is really how our ancestors farmed, right? And it's it's a very simplistic approach um, of giving back to nature, uh, keeping a full bank account in 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 our reserves out there instead of constantly just taking from the vineyard. We're constantly giving back, and um, our our commitment to biodynamics, um, like I said, has been going on for 15 plus years, and the neat thing about biodynamics, from my perspective, being out in the vineyards every day, is that in, in an average year, the people that grow biodynamically, you're, you're not gonna really see it, right? Because in an average year, most people do okay. okay but yeah. we're in the third year of a drought now, in, or we were in 2014, and quite possibly the fourth year of a drought in 2015. And that's where you really see the differences in our commitments to bio, biodynamics. Uh, composting uh, every single year for 15 years uh, creates a, a real stockpile of nutrients um, and microorganisms that make further nutrients available for the plant. So in 2014, we saw biodynamics win out. And I think that's the important thing is, is in an average year, you're not going to see a huge difference in what we do, uh, which we kind of term organics 2.0. We, we view it as like another layer of organics. So most people are familiar with organic farming. We take that a step further and we apply, we apply homeopathic teas um, right. that have been composted. Um, over uh, a year's time, sometimes six months' time. Um, so the composting nature of it condenses um, whatever flour or whatever type of tea that we are trying to prepare. And then we go out and we either spray that directly on the foliage or on the ground, um, depending on what type of preparation we're putting out there. So you have organics, and then we, we have an, an, a next level of organics, which is really... The original form of organics, which is biodynamics, right. and, and we 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 involve animals. Um, you can't have this type of program without uh, the use of animals. We have uh, Scottish Highlander cattle, and then we also have um, a species of a sheep that we that we use in in usually the off season because sheep are pretty aggressive on eating the leaves. But right. uh, we have those guys out there all winter, and they they aerate the soil with their feet. Um, they spread manure um, as they go through, right. and they also eat the weeds when we can't get tractors in. So it's a very, it's a very unique system, and we like to view it as a, cl as a closed system. And our goal is to, is to someday have this property act almost by itself in, in the way that a, a, that a forest does. And we're very close to the forest, so we're constantly 
reminded of that being in the shadow of Sonoma Mountain. That's a huge forest up there, and it's it's a constant reminder that that that's the end goal is to have a hundred percent self sustaining system, and and we're getting there. It just right. it just takes a long time. So I was mentioning earlier that. Um, you know, this, this, this biodynamics is, is something that shows itself in a tough year, like we had in 2014, really low water levels, um, but we have stable tonnage. Um, and that's, that's really the key for us is to create balance in the vineyard so that we don't get a roller coaster of tonnages because that's really hard for the winemakers and it's really hard for sales to right. plan on on a roller coaster type system but if we have a general idea of how much tons we're going to get off of each property it uh it really helps everyone involved in it and it really helps the vines the vines thrive in a balanced system so if if you've got one year where your um your canopy is is bigger than the previous year and it has less fruit that's going to go throughout the year in in a state of imbalance and that triggers the next year's imbalance and you continually get further away from the goal so our goal is always a perfect fruit to canopy ratio and we've we've decided that through the collection of data which is our a huge part of our program we we practice science here every single day Um, we have quite a few research projects going on at any one given time and we we stick with them and and that's the that's the tough part is doing research is not a one or two year deal uh doing research is a continual process and you really can't get anything out of that research until you have a long-term track record so we're looking we're making decisions now based on the last 15 years of what we've done Uh in the vineyard and you know the last couple years have been really interesting but we still can't build on that information until we establish long-term trend lines. So, uh, again, 2014, really tough vintage, but uh, the good wineries are going to come out on top. The good wineries are going to make great wine in 2014 right. because although it was challenging, the wines that we're seeing coming off the, this vintage are really special. They're very unique. And, um, you know, you took us to a tour of, of everything, and what I noticed versus any other winery I've been to. And I've, I haven't gone to a lot of bio, biodynamic, but I've been to a couple. And the, you, have, you really have an ecosystem, mm-hmm. okay? Whereas instead of it's just, you know, uh, not using pesticides and using um, various methods to t- decide when you do harvest, when you do planting, when you do all these things, instead of just that, um, you, you have a whole ecosystem that allows you to do it. So you have like the insectaries, mm-hmm. um, you've got the whole recycle, the the, the water recycling, or sure. the water reclaim, reclamation, really. Sure. Um, that, I just found that was fascinating. Kind of briefly talk about those. Well, the what we're really referencing is an investment in the future. Mm-hmm. And uh, working for this company, I can tell you that there is a, there's a huge commitment by the leadership here to the future or in the future, I should mm-hmm. say. And you, you mentioned the insectary. The insectary is kind of the, the middle of the spoke in this property. And we've, we've had scientists from uh, UC Berkeley come here 15 years ago and help set that up. And what it is is a collection of different species of plants that harbor different types of beneficial organisms. So over the course of a day, uh, certain species of organism uh, or bug, let's say insect, will go out into the vineyard and eat the bugs that ne- we don't necessarily want around. Um, later in the day, a different set of, of of insects might do the same thing, but in a different part of the vineyard. So insectary is a huge part of what we do. It's what it's what allows us not to have to spray pesticides. We spray some organic fungicides, certainly, um, as everybody in the industry does. Right. Uh, well, not necessarily organic. We spray only organic uh, approved uh, fungicides, but we don't have to spray any pesticides because there's never a point where we get that big of an outbreak. If a if a if, if an insect from the outside comes in, which right. always happens with wind and, and rain or whatever, different plants that come in, it never has a chance to get out of control because of that counterbalance system that we have in the insectary. Um, 
We also recycle over 3 million gallons of water a year, which we're really proud of, especially in, in the current state mm -hmm. of things in California. And to take that a step further, um, we, we had enough water to water more than we did this year. But just because you have it doesn't mean you use it. Mm -hmm. And we, we utilize uh, two or three pieces of technology that allow us to decide exactly what the, the water status of the plant is. So we're not going out there and, and just watering based on a preconceived notion of the time of year. This is when we usually water. We don't right. do that. We water based on the scientific facts of what's going on in that in that piece of land um so again we're in the third year of a drought in 2014 and i mentioned this earlier we uh from 2012 to 2013 we lowered our water use by 25 percent from 2013 to 2014 we lowered it again another 20 percent and that's um a function of two things number one the new types of technology that we've been util utilizing that we have probes that go down the ground five, six feet, and right. it tells us exactly uh, if the roots are taking up water, if there's any water left for those roots, uh, what have you. Uh, the second key component of that, which I should have said first, really, because it's, <laughs> it's the most important, is organics and biodynamics. are. It's, it's like farming without crutches. You can't go out there and you have some you have something that you weren't paying attention to you can't go out there someday and just say oh i'm going to spray this nuclear product and i'll end it because that's a conventional type of program mm -hmm. we have to be out there every single day boots on the ground and i think that you know people can debate the efficacy of of organics and and biodynamics but what you can't debate is that that type of program where you don't have anything to fall back on, it makes you be more proactive. It makes you be out in the vineyard every single day, and right. we have and you know throw animals into the mix. You can't you can't leave uh, animals unattended in you know for multiple days at a time. So right. we we are always here, and I think that's the the number one uh, thing that makes us successful. Um, it, you know, in conjunction with organics and biodynamics, but. The, the idea is, is that before something becomes an issue and before something gets to the point where we can't control it with the methods that are available to us, um, we, f we sniff it out. We find it w mm -hmm. way before it becomes an issue. And that's really a testament to, to the entire vineyard team. Um, and our vineyard team here has been intact uh, in large part since, since the very beginning, since 1980, when... Uh, when they took over this this vineyard and um, our vineyard manager uh, great man great uh, great manager great plant person great animal person he's been here for 30 years right so when you have that type of mainstay you know um, the 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 program stays in line right and he he was here before we converted to organics and biodynamics so he's he would be a very qualified person to attest to the the change. You know, before we switched to biodynamics, we were we were on on board with everybody else in California in the time in the early '80s that were just uh, spraying massive amounts of of, of herbicides, uh, of pesticides, basically trying to uh, make a monocrop type of system, just grapevines, no no weeds, no grasses, no nothing, just the plant right. and the and the earth and and what they found was that eventually you couldn't hear the birds coming through the property you couldn't you you didn't see the 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 other larger animals coming in to uh, you know eat the rabbits or something like that they the, all of that stopped um, because of how long they had been basically eradicating everything that they saw and about 17 years ago, they started the, the conversion to biodynamics, and we're reaping the benefits of, of that decision 15 years later, 16 right. years later. And, and again, that's, that's the commitment you know, to the future, and that's what, as an industry, we need to be less short-sighted. We need to be more focused about um, the next generation and, and how they're going to farm because wine is a wine is a peculiar industry um, in in this country in that 
it takes a lot of inputs to do. So we're constantly striving to reduce the amount of inputs, not the amount that we go out there and manage and, and right. look at stuff, but the, the actual hardcore inputs, that's what we're trying to reduce every year. And I doubt there's very many people that even use less water, let alone 20% less water than last year. Right. It's phenomenal. And I think that's the, um, you know, all of this would be a moot point if, if not for the quality continuing to increase with that de decrease in inputs because right. the, the idea with biodynamics as it relates to wine growing is that we are trying to express this piece of property. And the way that you do that is you use native yeast in fermentation, the, the yeast that are native to this area. Right. That's what we use in, in, in these biodynamic wines. We don't acidulate, meaning we don't add acid. We pick at the most perfect time. Um, we, we, don't, we don't pick the grapes way over ripe and then water them way back and run them through a, a piece of technology that's gonna get rid of the, the bad aromas and keep the good aromas. Mm -hmm. What you see in this bottle is a very true expression of this, of this piece of property. And we are in the shadow of Sonoma Mountain here and the mountain dictates our, our microclimate and it, you know, the soil comes from that mountain. And we are very lucky to, to be operating under one of the rarest soils that exists on, on this earth. And that's uh, the volcanic nature of our soil. And there's beautiful pieces of obsidian uh, deep down in the soil. Um, we have multiple soil series here. We've got four main soil series, and then we have uh, quite a few others within each of those soil series. So the, ex uh, the expression of this piece of property is a combination of all the little subsections. And again, you can only do that if, if you don't manipulate the wine once it gets into the winery. So some years, we call it finessing, okay? Some okay. years the winemaker is required to finesse the wine a little bit more, meaning not, not change its chemistry, rather um, in, a, in a really tannic year we might remove some of, of the skins. That's a pretty, that's a pretty common practice um, if, if it's required, right? So there, right. there is some finessing, not, not, not to say that we, we put it in a vat and we come back three weeks later, you know, it's, it's not to say that we don't take care of it. There, it, there's, it's a, it's a, it's a very laborious process, but we don't manipulate it. Right. You're not, you're not, like you say, you're not adding acid. You're not watering it down. You're not using, there's what does that great, uh, I can't remember what some additive you can, sure. you know, you're not using those things that maybe, especially the more commercialized, you know, wineries are doing, or maybe even some of the smaller ones just to, to, to manipulate it to like you said to what they think the customer wants right yeah instead of instead of listening to the customer as to what they want yeah we like to think that uh, you know each year is a or each vintage of, of, of this particular wine here the tribute is is really a, a thumbprint of of what happened that year. It's kind of like the ring in a trunk of a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you can see if it was a really hot year or a really wet year, if you cut down a hundred year old tree, you can right. go back through there and you can see kind of what, what kind of vintage it was. Similarly, uh, we, we're trying to make the most expressive wine of that vintage. We're trying to show people uh, the best we could do from this property in the given year. So this this particular vintage that we're going to try here in a bit is the 2011 vintage, uh, which up here most people would describe as a very very tough vintage. Right. Uh, but we came out with a product that we're very proud of and that's drinking very nice because we we, we committed to letting it be what it is. And oftentimes, okay. you know, it's like the soil soil influence always wins out over whatever rootstock that, that you have by and large. It's like the vintage is, is more than likely going to win out anyways. So you might as well embrace it. And, and we did. And I, I'm, I really like this one. The 2011s are going to be, uh, uh, similar to the 2014 in that the good wineries are going to really shine for different mm -hmm. reasons, right? Cause 2014 I view as a very good vintage for us. 2011 was very challenging, but in both years, 
the good wineries are going to win out. And I, I, I really feel strongly about that, especially this year, because it, it was a very tough vintage for, for a lot of people. Nice. Um, before we get into the wine, how did you get into all this? So you have an interesting <laughs> story, and you don't have the typical story, which De is, is kind of nice. Definitely not typical. I I've always loved uh, plants, gardening. Um, grew up doing that um, w with my parents, and uh, actually went to college uh, in international business and finance with a with a focus in language, and kind of midway through that process. Uh, you know, I started utilizing uh, my language a little bit more and got into wine through a friend and, and basically started at the absolute bottom of, of, the, of the food chain, uh, working as a laborer in a vineyard and just kind of working my way up. And, and I, I, think I, I think I made it quicker than most because of, of, you know, in business school, you learn a lot about management and I had the language that matches this, right. this industry. And, you know, so got, got really excited about it, ended up vineyard managing for a while. And like I told you guys earlier, I realized I knew nothing. And yeah. that, that was when I decided to go back to school and uh, get my master's in, in, in plant science okay. and, and with, a, with a focus on viticulture and uh, did a really neat research project and basically... Um, here I am now. Right. So uh, my my role here is 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 viticulture, uh, but it's 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 also the coordination on the operation side. We have a lot of moving parts here um, because of how our vineyards are spaced out a bit. Um, mm -hmm. We have you know three vineyards in Sonoma Valley. Uh, we have two vineyards on the Sonoma Coast, and then we have one vineyard up on the northern edge of of Sonoma County, right, right before okay. you get into uh, Mendocino County. Um, it's actually, I believe it's the highest, if not second highest vineyard in Sonoma County okay. that we farm up there. Um, and you know, the, the, the logistics of that, it, it doesn't take just one person. It takes a, it takes a whole team. And the, the team that we have here is just constantly impresses me, you know, really good leadership at the top. And, um, really really good team of doers you know this is a really hard business right um i was referencing earlier how little sleep we get during harvest but nobody complains yeah uh, nobody i mean this is, we'd be doing this anyways right that's yeah you know, we love it that's that's a sign of you know people that are dedicated to to the the, the job and, and the work and the company if it, Company that treats you well, you're you're more willing to to go that extra mile for. If they don't treat you well, you're just gonna punch your punch your time card and you know I put my hours in and that's it. Yeah, and you I know? think the consistency. You spoke about the organization uh, part of this, and uh, you know if if there's some contradictions along the way, you're probably not gonna be uh, as committed. But I can tell you, it's it's all in from the top. I mean, right. everybody everybody believes in 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 the values of hard work um and and getting it done no matter what it takes right that, that's what that's what we're kind of committed to as a as a vineyard team so it's fun it's a lot of fun especially when the giants are winning the world series <laughs> right yeah makes a lot of fun yeah i had to throw that in there <laughs> hey no no problem i uh, mean <laughs> mean you know the spurs won won the championship so uh you know last season i, I had my spurs hat on earlier but anyway um uh Talk real quick about what grapes you grow on the uh, property. Sure. This this property was uh, originally planted and still is uh, about 85% or so Cabernet. Mm -hmm. We throw in a couple other uh, Bordeaux varietals, um, mainly for this wine. So we have we have uh, Sauvignon Blanc on the white side here. Uh, we have Cabernet, Merlot. Petit Verdot, Malbec, and Cabernet Franc. So we have all five uh, Bordeaux blenders, and then we have a very exciting um, program that's that's really starting to gain steam, and that's our uh, a wine that we call Joaquin's Inferno. It's named after our our vineyard manager uh, who's been here for thirty years because they're they're one, two, three, four blocks 
that go into this wine and they are the hardest blocks on the property to farm uh, to farm mm -hmm. so it kind of gives them fits every year but somehow the wine is just turning out really really neat it's a spectacular wine it's it's Zinfandel based um, and it's got smaller uh, amounts of Petite Syrah and Grenache so it's a fun blend and, right. and we feel like uh, on this type of mountain estate where we've got just a multitude of exposures um, we really like uh, the Zinfandel um, we really like the the Grenache um, I mean, in addition to the Cabernet, the Cabernet is, is my favorite to work with here. Um, it behaves most of the time. It's not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like Zinfandel. Zinfandel very rarely behaves. It's a, it's a tough one to farm. But um, th th those are basically the, the two programs are, you know, our Cabernet and the Bordeaux varieties that, that get blended in. And, right. then, um, and then this Joaquin's Inferno, which is... is it's a spectacular wine as well. Nice. Yeah, yeah we we asked some of that earlier. I really liked it. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some more of that. Um, sure. You know, getting some of that. Sure. Um, I know you're pressed for time, so let's go ahead and uh, get into, let's just get sure. into the wine here, okay? Yeah, so this uh, this is a 2011 tribute. Um, the, the winemaker for this wine, uh, Mike Benziger, uh, founded this property with his family in 1979 they started up in in 80 um it's called tribute as a as a nod to to his folks and um one other gentleman that really helped um helped on the business side of things and the tribute is the combination of the best grapes on the property um this particular vintage is um yeah, so it's got a little bit of all five uh, Bordeaux varieties in it. Um, it kind of depends on the year, what it, the exact blend is. Right. But generally speaking, it's about 85% cab. Um, and it only comes from uh, blocks within blocks, like we discussed earlier. So the, the tribute portion of every block is, is cared for on another level. And what we find is that... Uh, we we like the differences because the the other areas of each block that don't go into tribute go into a different styling of wine. So the the goal with this wine is to make a balanced wine at a reasonable alcohol so that it can be enjoyed with food. Right. And we have two distinct sides of our property and we have a lot of cabernet on both sides and we get more red fruit from one side and more uh, black fruit from the other side. So it's because we combine the best of the best into this, you know, of each block into this wine, it's, it's, it's multidimensional. It's, it's not one dimensional in, by, by any stretch because um, you're going to get some red fruit in there, you're going to get some black fruit, and you're going to get a lingering finish that uh, leaves you wanting more, is, is my experience. Mm -hmm. And again, 2011, really tough vintage. And... You know, to come out with a wine out of 2000, 2011 that's that's this balanced, that's this tasty at this stage in the game, I think is remarkable. It's uh, it's excellent. Um, you know, we we had a chance before before filming to try some try, try some wines. We tried this earlier, and um, you know, it's and this is this was a fresh bottle. Mm -hmm. um, we we had, had another one that was open for a little bit, but they but both bottles you know have been have been spectacular. So this is excellent. Um, we didn't really touch upon it here, but how did Mike get into all this? I mean, yeah, I think he, <laughs> it's uh, not that she decided to buy a, 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 a you know buy a property. <laughs> no, I think uh, if if you if you've never met the man, he's uh, extremely passionate, and he he worked in in the wine business um, selling, and then uh, got enough taste of it in the selling part to want to start making wine. And when a passionate person commits to something, they go all in. And that's, it's really that simple. I mean, he, he's, the, uh, he's the engine that drives this company. And right. uh, I, I, I can't say that, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a team effort, but there has to be, there has to be somebody pushing, pushing the envelope all the time. And he's extremely committed to biodynamics and, and um, it's, uh, you know this this tribute wine is a tribute to him in a sense too because he labors over it um, 
like like no winemaker I've ever seen. You know, it 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 meaning labors over the every single decision that we make with regards to this wine, and that's what right. it takes. You know, it's uh, we don't pick early, um, we don't we don't pick late. We pick what we think after his 30 years at this property is is the absolute ideal time, and uh, you know, it's it's not. It's certainly not rare, but I think the amount of time that a winemaker spends in the vineyard is extremely important to the final product. Yeah. So our winemakers, they're not sitting at the crush pad waiting for us to deliver grapes. They're out there the night before picking through the night with us, like I explained, Yeah. so that they can, they can not just have a block within a block, but within that finite space, there could be some different treatments that we would want to do um, to either emphasize or diminish a, a flavor and aroma compound from that little space. So uh, in all of our wines, all of our winemakers are very active in that process. And I think that 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 for me, that's uh, it, it makes it fun on the production side, having the winemakers there. A lot of times in this business, the viticulture person has the grapes turned in and you move on. Right. But that's not how we work here. We, we work hand in hand with the winemakers um, uh, starting at harvest and we're, we still are. We're, everything's uh, fermented for 2014, which is uh, probably the, the time where you can finally, you know, take, take a, it's a quick breath, right? Right, quick, it's yeah. Not yeah. A, it's not a, a two month vacation, but we're certainly uh, taking a, a breath right now and appreciating uh, what was given to us this year because it was, uh, we were not expecting this at all. We did not think that we would have, you know, stable tonnages. We did not think that we would have great quality because of, of, of how tough this vintage was setting up. Right. And it's, it goes back to the proactiveness that you have to have. I think biodynamics in a sense saved us this year because in, in a conventional system, you can get lazy and right. you can still create a good product. That wouldn't have worked this year though. So, continually being proactive, continually getting winemaker uh, feedback, continually tasting these wines um, from last year, um, moving into this year, trying to trying to see what we can do on the farming side to correct or enhance certain things is 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 really the name of the game and it uh, you know we're at the the some people think this is the tail end of the process but this is really the beginning you know mm -hmm. after you harvest it's not the end it's the beginning for us we think about it and you know kind of opposite I'd yeah say. well we saw it today i mean you're already you're already being proactive um with laying of the cover crop uh the hay out there and then the, and then the guys literally digging not deep trenches but digging trenches you know yeah you know yeah, they're, so. they're they're you're already you're, you're you're instead of like you even told us instead of waiting until you know like december january and everyone's out hunting and fishing right now mm -hmm. um you're doing this now so that you are that much more prepared and and the proactive thing i think is is very very um apt description of what you're doing here and we talked about being proactive versus reactive. I mean, even even in the industry I'm in, it's if you are not proactive in how you handle your day to day operation, things get out of hand, and now you're playing catch up. And sure. if you're proactive, you're not playing catch up. Yeah, and I think we we did talk about it briefly. I I don't know if this is just a, <laughs> a, you know an observation that that I've had in my life, but seemingly the. Uh, if you make a mistake, but you make it proactively, you pay way less of a consequence. If yes. you make a mistake and it's reactive, it almost like it compounds on itself. So it's not to say that we do everything perfect. Farming is not a perfect deal. It's, uh, it's something that you, you try to make the absolute best decision. And if mother nature cooperates, then, then you win the World Series. If, uh, <laughs> nice, if, nice. If, if I like not, that. If if not, then uh, you know. Then then you're the first first draft. You could be like the Dodgers. <laughs> well, you could be like the Dodgers. Dodgers you yeah. Know? Well, yeah, Dodger dogs. I hear. I'm, well, not you, but they, I hear they're pretty good. But we're not going to go there. No, I'm just saying. Though, <laughs> if they, you know, they they well, for whatever reason they weren't prepared. Yeah. And, and it's a similar type of thing. You know, you know, you can never let your guard down. Farming is so difficult. Um, and it's an everyday commitment. It's it's 
there's no off days during the season. And a lot of people in this industry would tell you the same thing. And I'm not, I'm not saying we're the only ones that, that do a great job. There's a lot of people in this industry in Sonoma County, Napa County, um, that are doing a spectacular job doing very similar things as us. But you, you mentioned our, our post harvest plan and, and basically what, what that entails is the minute we finish picking, we switch focuses to, to 2015. So right. we have, we have petiole analysis, which is the, uh, the, what, what connects the leaf itself to the cane, we get those, those analyzed and that tells us where the plant is nutritionally, um, you know, a couple months ago. And we do that two or three times during the year. So we track the nutrition in the plant that way. And then we also take soil samples and then we come up with a proactive nutrition program that, you know, usually involves heavy cover cropping. Uh, but within cover cropping, we use five or six different types of seed uh, seed blends, mm -hmm. depending on the area. If the area is very vigorous, we'll plant something that uh, will bring in beneficial organisms because of the flowers in the spring, but also we'll use a crop that won't give us more nitrogen. We won't use leguminous crops in an area that's already very vigorous. We'll, mm -hmm. use, we'll use a devigoring type of seed blend in in the vigorous areas and vice versa in the non-vigorous areas so we've got i mean to the point where in one row we could have two different types of seed right because within those blocks there's so many changes so uh, we do that and then we do the the hay for erosion control um and like i said a, a proactive nutritional program which is the basis of that is our biodynamic compost right all i can tell you is that this is i mean i've I've seen some pretty amazing things this trip from different wineries, um, but I haven't seen anything like what you guys do here. You even talked about being there, a uniqueness here mm -hmm. at the, the winery. I've I've not, and it's not that I've been to tons of wineries, but I've been to enough wineries to kind of know what how things work. I mean, I I've, I've seen one winery room, I've seen them all, I've seen the tanks, I've seen the barrels, but it's still always interesting to look sure. at. But I've never seen anybody do such a, a, a closed system, basically, mm -hmm. as an ecosystem like you have, um, and pay that much attention to it. Um, I, I, I've not seen anybody take it to that same level. Um, there's There's been elements of it in other wineries, but never the complete package that you guys do here, and it's extremely mm -hmm. impressive. Well, I appreciate that. I think, uh, I, I think the reason for that is because even if we couldn't put uh, organic or biodynamic on the label, we'd be doing this anyways. Right. It's not a marketing ploy for us. The 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 we make wine in this way because that's the type of wine we like to drink. We mm -hmm. like to sit around the table with family, with really good food and friends, and and drink food friendly wine that expresses you know our home, which is here in the Sonoma Mountain area, Sonoma Valley. Um, and, and we love it and we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it any other way, even if we couldn't, couldn't market it. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in every one of us that, that, that works on this farm, um, to, to do it to the best of our ability and, and have it for the next generation. Cause yeah. that's what it's really about, you know, a, a forward thinking type of organization that, that has a really long-term vision is it's really fun yeah yeah it, it is well um i know you probably gotta get going here pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> um so um and i don't like trying to cut things short because we could probably talk for another hour i mean the, the, the what what you talked about and on the tour we could still talk forever and um but i i again want to appreciate you spending all the time you My did pleasure. i mean we've We've been probably about a couple well, over over two hours, I think. Now we're we're getting close to two and a half hours, I think. Um, been been an absolute eye opener, uh, a pleasure. I'm super mm -hmm. stoked that uh, we were able to come out here mm -hmm. um, to to make this happen, and um, uh, I appreciate everything that you've done and, and and everybody here. Of course, everybody all week's been very very uh, helpful and hospitable, but you know just having that that tour that i've i've never had that that level i've been in vineyards but never like this so um been a pleasure the wine is phenomenal um and uh, i encourage anyone that can find this out there you know 
uh, restaurant level. Is this also retail, um, or is it pretty uh, yeah. much restaurant? Yeah, but the best thing to do is just uh, get on our website. And, yeah, that too. Uh, and and or maybe give us a shout if you're in an area. Uh, the the I know this is distributed in restaurants, but I'm not sure to right. the, to the extent. Um, <laughs> the winemaker would know. Mike Benziger would know. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Give us a shout. Uh, check out our website. We got a new website coming out here in in uh, I think in the next uh, three four weeks. So okay. that's going to be exciting. It gives a little bit better uh, format uh, mm-hmm. for for us to to show the beauty of this property. Right. And uh, yeah, we're just really really thankful um for for another great year and uh we're we're putting pencil to paper for next year already nice well uh folks i just want to thank all of you for stopping by um i'll have the link below for the website so uh everybody can check it out uh of course hit the links above uh to friend me up um and then i'm I'm not pointing i'm not pointing at jeffrey i'm pointing at the paypal button that's actually kind of down there Mm -hmm. um so if you want to send a couple ducats uh please do and uh, of course visit the winery or visit the website and uh, check out this tribute uh among their other wines you know that that joaquin's inferno was pretty pretty tasty too i like that um but yeah check it out and uh we will see everyone again next time